Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Chris from Simply Classic. And today we're doing one of my favorite videos. We are going to take inspiration and creativity to make something our own. So here is our inspiration. This is a bag by Kate Spade. And I just loved the look of it. When I saw it, I thought, this is so cool. I like the handles. I guess that's kind of what drew me to it. Um, <clears throat> and it just has got a very, in my opinion, a very summery and chic look. So this is what we're going to recreate. Now, you can go to my website at simplyclassic.net and download a cutting chart with some real basic instruction. What you're going to want to do is get the cutting chart and then watch this video so that I can take you through all the steps. Now, I'm not going to do the lining because your lining you can do however you want. Um, I give you the measurements for the base pieces on the lining and then you can cut whatever pockets and all that kind of good stuff that you want to do. So we're not going to go through that. Um, the other thing too is that the it, when I'm going through the pieces, I tell you the wrong size for the lining. So I'm going to make sure I put a caption to correct that. Um, I'm t I told you to cut a little bit too small. Um, okay, so I did a tester of this first before I did anything else. And here is my version. So I tried to do follow the pattern exactly as it was. One thing I did not like, or I, you know, I don't have a, the actual bag. I did not see the bag in person. I think in the uh, Kate Spade bag, this <clears throat> here goes all the way through to the back, and that's how you close it, is you pull this. I felt like if you did that, every time you tried to get your wallet out or your something, that was going to be in the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those um, little cords were just going to be in your way. So anyway, I decided not to do that and instead to just kind of use it as a decorative piece and to put a snap closure in here, magnetic snap. Now, I went ahead and did the handles just like to have them. I'm not crazy about the edge showing here. Um, I have some edge coat coming where I'm going to go ahead and paint that and hopefully that will make this a little bit better. I'm definitely going to make sure I paint that before I sell it. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, isn't it cute? It's so cute. I love it. Okay, but the bag we're going to make today is this version. So what I did a little different is I went ahead and used these O-rings on the handles instead of, I'm trying to see how you can see that, instead of using the handles in this manner. I think it gives it a cleaner look. You don't see any raw edges. I'm going to show you how to do this handle. But one thing it does do is it almost makes your handle twist a little bit because you see the way that it's connected here versus here you see your handle twists a little bit. So just keep that in mind. If, if you don't want to have this version, that's not a problem. Just construct the bag and then when you're done, go ahead and just stick your handles on. And all I did was sew a couple of stitches here. And if you want to, you can put a rivet, no problem. Now, if you notice, both of these are almost exactly like the inspiration piece as far as the fabrics. This, I got both of these from Bodio. I don't know if they still have them in stock or not. I'm going to link the Bodio site down below, but you need to go ahead and see if you can find them. Hopefully they still have them. I got this red one first, I think, and then later on I got this kind of brown one. But it is amazing at how similar it is to the inspiration piece. I mean, as far as the fabrics, it's just, it's just great. Now, on this one here, I did put some rivets and, um, of course, did the handle a little different, but I, I wanted to just kind of dress it up a little bit. But the inspiration is like this. I mean, basically, the only hardware you need is 
two grommets or, or eyelets and a magnetic snap closure and that's it and you really don't even have to put the magnetic snap closure and you almost really don't even have to put the eyelets or, or, rip, or grommets you can leave this out totally if you want to but I think it adds to it so I'm going to show you how to do these mitered corners okay see that see how good they came out so we're going to go over how to do that and without further ado, let's get going on this thing. Okay, let's start out by going over all the parts. So you're going to cut two main body pieces. These are going to be 14 wide by 12 and a half tall. I went ahead and cut out one and a half inch boxes at the bottom of each one. And then I went ahead and put my Decaville light on here. Now, when you adhere your Decaville light, <clears throat> you want to go ahead, you see here I drew my seam allowances in, half inch seam allowance. Kept it away from the top, each side, and then also away from the bottom here, half inch there, okay? And just went ahead and adhered that in the middle. So we have two of those. We have one keeper. This is for the little piece on the top that's going to hold our cording. I went ahead and drew a line down the center of that. We'll put some double-sided tape and fold the centers or fold the edges in. We have two top lining pieces. This they're 14 wide by two and a half tall. This is for our cord. Now, I cut this um, one inch wide, and it's 22 inches long. We're going to fold this together, sew it, and then probably trim a little off, but I wanted it a little wider than I needed so that when I trimmed it, I'd have a nice clean edge to edge paint. These are our exterior top pieces. Now these here are, this is what's called the accent strip, and they are two and a half, excuse me, they're two, two inches by 14. I drew a line down the center, and then I also drew a line a half inch from one edge on both these pieces. This is our strap. Now you can make this as long as you want. I cut it two inches by 36. That's going to give me a one inch wide strap and it will give me about an 18, a little less than 18 inch drop on it. These here are our accent strips. So they're, uh, let's see, two and a half inches wide by 33 inches long. Now, I drew a line down the center. We're actually going to be, once we fold these to the, the edges to the center, we're actually be cutting some 45 degree angles with these. So you want to go ahead, if you can, and cut the full 33 inch out of one piece. You don't want to piece these if you can help it. So, you know, you don't want to put your edges together and do a 45 degree angle and piece it because then you're going to have a seam in the middle of that accent piece and I don't, I don't think that's going to look real great. So the reason why I had you get so much of this fabric, I have suggested a yard, is because you need at least a 33 inch piece on these. Okay, so those are all of our main body fabric, accent fabric, and your second accent fabric. So you're going to need um, a couple of O-rings if you decide you want to put your straps on with the O-rings. If not, you can do it the way the original bag had it where the strap just looped around the accent piece. So you do not need these. You are going to need some grommets or eyelets, whatever you prefer. I have two of these. Of course, you're going to, well, depending on what you want for your lining, I'm going to put a zipper um, in my lining, a zipper pocket, two slip pockets, and then a key fob. So 
just to kind of give you an idea, if you decide you want to do that, let's go over lining pieces. Because your lining is going to be whatever you want. I didn't give you any measurements for that, except for the main pieces, because everybody wants something different. So I have my two main pieces here. These are 10 inches tall by 14 inches wide, and it, I cut my little squares again, one and a half inch squares. So I have two of these. And you see I'm doing it out of linen. Okay, since I'm doing a zipper pocket, I went ahead and cut two zipper pocket pieces. Now these pieces measure seven inches wide by six inches tall. So if you want to do a zipper pocket, that's probably going to be a good length for you because of the width of the bag. I have for my larger uh, slip pocket, I just cut one long piece. I'm going to fold it in half, wrong sides together, stitch up the sides, turn it. I'm going to actually put an accent piece on the top and then I'm going to sew it in. And this is going to hold a cell phone. This piece measures six and a half inches wide by 14 and a half inches tall. So just to kind of give you an idea of, again, if you want a slip pocket, give you a starting point. Then I'm going to put a smaller slip pocket as well. And this measures seven inches tall by about 10 and a quarter inches wide. And again, I'm just gonna fold this in half, stitch, and then I'm going to put a piece of band on the top of it. I did cut a zipper overlay for my lining because I like to see that inside the bag. I think that looks really nice. And then this is for my key fob. I always put a key fob in all my bags and I just cut this one inch and I'm just going to fold it in half and edge coat it. And sometimes I don't even edge coat it because it's inside. It just depends on what it looks like. I probably will on this because it's gray. And, um, and then I just cut it to size. You're also going to need, and I forgot to pull it out, a snap closure for the top. And then um, if you want to add rivets, you can. I think I'm gonna jazz up this bag a little bit and probably add some rivets at the top of the, um, at the top of each panel here, like the, the top of the handles, the accent pieces. And, um, probably on the handles, the handle as well. Okay. All right. So once you have all your pieces cut, you have your decable light adhered. I did put woven fuse too on the back of my linen. So let's get sewing. Before we get started, I want to show you how the cylinder arm converts to a flatbed and how easy it is. If you can see right here, there's a screw. I keep this screw in all the time. There's also one back here that you can't even see. I keep that in all the time as well. Then it came with a third one. And see there's a little hole right here in the table. I've marked with tape exactly, like I, I put this in at one point and leveled it. So now I don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time I put this long screw in. So all I'm gonna do, there's two washers on here. I'm just going to take this not out. Put this in. Then put the washer in the nut underneath and screw it in. I'm just going to get it until it's nice and tight. Okay. So here's the table that it came with. You see there's a cutout for the cylinder arm. And in the back, it has two holes, one for each of these back screws. And it has one hole right there for this front screw. So all I'm going to do is stick this on, make sure that these screws align in those holes, and 
And just like that, I have a flat bed. So this is a Texo 2750. And I paid, I think it was extra for this package. It came with a laser and a guide, built-in guide here, and then this table as well. And for me, this table was definitely worth it. So I know a lot of you had questions about what kind of machine should I buy. You know, I've had my console for about 15 years. If I had to do it all over again, I would probably just do something like this that converts back and forth. So we're going to sew on this today. We're going to sew the whole bag on it, and that way you can kind of see how it works. So step one is getting it set up, and you see how easy that was. To take it down, all I'll do is take this table off and unscrew this one screw, because this is the only one that's in my way, and then we'll be good to go. We'll be able to use the cylinder arm. So let's go ahead and get sewing. We are going to start with our handle. So we had drawn a line down the center. I went ahead and put double-sided tape, but I left it about a half inch from each side. I'm going to take my two O-rings and I'm going to slide them on, and then I'm going to sew these two short ends right sides together. Now, my space here is a little smaller to show you and to sew, so I might be moving the camera back and forth a little bit. So if I am, I apologize. I hope I don't get you oh, dizzy. Okay, one thing I'm going to tell you about this machine, all the time, every single time, I have to hold my threads. If I don't, it is not pretty. And they tell you, they, you know, Texo tells you to hold your threads. So just kind of keep that in mind if you are thinking about this machine. Not a big deal. We should be doing that anyway. It does have a needle down position. And if you, um, with your foot, if you hit the back of your pedal, the needle comes up. So that's kind of a cool little thing that it does because my conso does not have a needle down position so I'm always having to adjust it. Okay so now I'm going to take this and open up this seam allowance and I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to peel the tape back just a little bit. Not too much because it will stick to my table. There we go. All right. And let's top stitch. So that's what we have. So now I'm going to peel this tape off and I'm going to fold my sides into my center. And I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back. So now I have a great big loop with two O-rings on it. Okay. So I'm going to split my O-rings, one on one side, one on the other, and I'm going to center my seam. And then I put some double-sided tape on only one side. See, this is one wrong side, and if I just flip the whole thing over, this is the other, and that's where I put the double-sided tape. I'm going to flip this, obviously, so the wrong side is in. And then I'm going to remove the backing of the tape, and we're just going to tape this together. Okay? I want to make sure that my seam is 
centered or pretty close to centered. So let's take off this backing. And the center is right there because I put a mark. Okay. Take this off. So now I'm just going to lay this down so that the edges are matched. Got one ring on each side. So the next thing I'm going to do is from each ring, I'm going to mark one inch from, from the fold here. And that's where I want to stop my stitching. So I'm just going to put a chalk mark here. And then do the same thing on this side. So now I'm just going to stitch an eighth of an inch away. I'm going to stop here at my chalk mark, turn, go down the other side at this chalk mark, turn, and then meet back up. I'm going to um, pull my threads through. I'm not going to back stitch. And then I'm going to put a rivet between my chalk mark and my ring on each side just to kind of dress it up a little bit. Okay. So, let's do that. So there is my top stitch handle. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my threads through, tie them off, hide my ends here. I'm going to put a rivet on each side and then we will come back to start sewing our accent straps. Okay, here's my strap done. So we're going to set this aside. We're going to need it again shortly. Before we map, uh, move on to our accent strips, we are going to need to go ahead and put our piece, our accent piece on the top. So in the beginning, you know, we have our, our piece here that we cut. We drew a line a half inch up and another line one inch up. I put quarter inch double side tape along the very bottom edge here. And I just folded it up like this. So then I put a piece of quarter inch tape below the one inch line and above where I folded, so right in between. 
And what we're going to do is remove that tape, that piece of backing, and we're going to put it right, we're going to line this one inch line right here, right up along the edge of our exterior piece. Now, I also put a piece of half inch tape at the very top. We're not going to deal with this right now. That's going to be for something later, but that's just to um, make it a little easier so that when we go to fold this over and to encapsulate our lining, we will already have the double-sided tape on there. So you can either put that on now or later. Either way, it doesn't matter. But for right now, I'm going to take off the piece of tape that I, or the backing of the tape that I put between my one inch line and my fold, my, my edge that I folded. And I'm just going to line that line up at the very top. So my fold is going to be on the face and then we're going to top stitch it on. So I'm just going to turn this around. I'm going to just lay this right on that one inch line. Just like that. Okay. And now I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch this on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing for the other side. Okay, we're back at the table because now we want to go ahead and make all of our placements for our accent strips and also cut our 45 degree angles. So the first thing you want to do is from each long edge, okay, so this, this edge, this edge, and the bottom, not from these shorter edges here, from the actual edges of the bag. We're going to measure two inches and we're going to draw a line. Now you don't need to go all the way up because the straps are actually um, where we sew is going to stop part way. So two inches, two inches, and two inches. Okay. So our straps our accent straps are going to go on the inside of these lines. I took a strap and put double sided tape down the center and just went ahead and folded the edges in. Don't top stitch yet. You're just going to fold the edges in. Then you want to take whatever I have, happen to have this ruler here and it has a 45 degree angle on here. So I'm going to line up the 45 degree angle with one of the long edges. Make sure it is good and straight on that 45, on that line. Now you can use your cutting table for this. I mean, whatever works for you. And I'm going to ahead and cut that. Okay. I would suggest you actually test this on your bag and don't just go with my measurement of nine and a half, uh, nine and a half inches. Because 
your lines may be slightly longer or shorter, just for whatever reason. You know, we all, sometimes you cut a little bit different. So what we want to do is from the point here, we want to line that point up right where these two lines intersect. And we just want to place it along the edge of our line here. And we want to make a mark at the very corner on the other side. And that is where we're going to cut our other 45 degree angle. Now, we cut this angle this way, so this angle needs to go this way, so they're both pointing in and up. The way you do that is, so I cut this one with the right side up. So I need to flip it and now cut it with the right side down to get the 45 degree angle in the other direction. So actually, I'm going to mark this with it upside down, and I need to do it right here. Okay, so I'm going to line my ruler up, and I'm going to put the very edge of the 45 degree angle on my ruler right on that mark that I made and make sure the rest lines up perfectly. So basically the whole edge lines up perfectly on that 45 degree angle line. Okay, and then I'm just going to make a cut. Now before you cut, look at it and make sure that your two short edges are on the same side and your two long edges are on the other side. So this is what we have. So this is going to go right down here at the bottom, just like that. Now you can use this piece for one edge over here. And you want to go ahead and make sure that if you line this up straight, your edges here, your miter meets perfectly. If it doesn't, you may have to recut. I found that, you know, when I was testing this and going through and cutting it, sometimes it seemed to be off a little. And when I relined it up on my ruler, sure as the world, it was just off a hair and that hair makes all the difference. So that is actually going to work perfectly right there. So what's going to happen is this handle is going to go down around to the other side and we're going to cut a miter on this end. But before we do that, Let's go ahead and mark our other side. Same thing, two inches. And get our short piece on this side. Okay, so I'm going to take my strap line up my 45 degrees So I cut that with the right side up, so now I'm going to flip it to figure out where I need to cut the other one. And it should be well see mine is right at 10 inches. This one is slightly bigger. So 
<clears throat> should be somewhere between nine and a half and ten inches, but do the do it like I'm doing it here. Don't just take my measurements because again, you might be off a little bit. And don't use this piece to cut this piece because again, you know, your lines, your cutting, I mean, something might be off just a tad and it'll throw off the miter. So I feel good with this. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. Forty-five degrees. Here, let's see. Let me do it this way. So I'm putting the edge of my ruler right on that dot. Okay, make sure my short ends are on the same side, and cut. Put it on over here and make sure it looks good. And then I can use this end for this side of the strap. And that matches up perfectly. Okay, so from here, we're going to go ahead and put some double-sided tape on the short end first. And I'll get my scissors. Stick that down. Now before we do these long ends, let me stick this one down too, we need to go ahead and sew right in between where the, like where our stitching stops here, between there and where the stitching is going to stop on the other piece. first. Okay. <clears throat> Let's cut our miter in our on our other side of our long straps. So these, you do want to use my measurements. These here are going to be 26 inches. And they're 26 inches from this point, this, not, the, not the inside point, not the short side. Okay, not this short side. It's going to be this longer side. 26 inches from here to the other long side. So just go ahead and measure out 26 inches on your table and make a mark. Now I'm going to flip this over because I know I cut it from the right side first. So 26 is right here. And now I'm going to cut this one. So line up my 45 degrees, putting the edge of the ruler right here on the dot, right on the line, making sure I'm lined up, making sure my short edges are on the same side, and then cutting that angle. I'm 
and we're going to do the same thing for our other strap. We're going to measure 26 inches. Before I cut, I'm going to make sure that they Let's see that the long ends, okay, I measured that wrong. Let me do that one more time. Okay, I cut this strap 27 inches instead of 26 inches. So that means I gotta cut an inch off. So let me look here. Okay, 26 inches is right there. So that will get them aligned. All right, so let me go ahead and cut that inch off. Make sure these are going to be the same one more time. Yep, that mark matches up perfectly. So, let's see. 45. My short edges are going to be in the same spot. And let's cut. So, you notice that I have you cut these a little bit longer. And that's just in case you mess up and you need to recut. So um, I, I found that it saved my butt the first time around. So hopefully it helps. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to take these two pieces. Before we put them on the bag, we're going to measure eight and a half inches up. And the, excuse me, 8.25. The 8.25 inches is from the long point, okay? So 8.25. I'm making sure I mark it on the right side. Two, now, <clears throat> before I go any further, one thing I am going to suggest you do is just go ahead and double check your angles. So I'm just going to double check that this, when it's laid against this blue line, is going to match up okay. And that one looks good. And let me make sure this one's going to match up okay. Okay, that one looks good. So now I'm going to take these other two and I'm going to make sure they are going to match up okay. Because if you're going to recut, you want to recut before we sew anything. So if I take these two pieces and spread them out, make sure they're even. Okay, that is beautiful. Perfect. Okay, you see what I did there? Just a dry fit. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the handles and we're going to top stitch between this blue line, or whatever color your line is, mine's blue, between these two lines. 
So we're just going to top stitch down one end and then we're going to top stitch down the other end. Don't stitch across yet, just down each end, pull your threads through to the back and you're going to hide them. So you can do that for both pieces. Okay, so I have my straps top stitch. I think you can see that. There you go. So now we need to go ahead and add these to the bag. So flip them over and put some double sided tape from where your stitching stops to the end. Thing that I found helpful was in the miters we're going to put a little bit of super glue just kind of hold them tight so the first thing I'm going to do is see how these points you see how that's kind of open up right there I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue there and I'm going to put a clip just to kind of hold this down and that'll just kind of keep this point down. I'm going to do that and this is um, something that I thought about kind of after the fact and I think it will help kind of hold everything down. So I'm going to get a couple clips. And I have this um, Gorilla Glue glue that's got a brush and a nozzle, and I'm just going to go ahead and use the brush and just brush just a little bit in there. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm just taking this brush and just... I'm just going to put a clip right here. Okay, we're just going to leave that for a few minutes, let that dry. And we need to get our strap. Now, if you're going to do the strap this way with the O-rings, then this is how you're going to put this on. If you're going to do it after the fact and just um, sew it on kind of like the photo was, then you're going to skip this step. You're just going to add it at the end. So we want to go ahead and add our strap on to our O-rings. Put one on each side here. Through the O-rings and down. I'm going to put a little bit of that glue in these corners right here too. See how those are kind of poking out? Okay, see how good that stayed? It doesn't take that long for that to dry. Good to go. So let's go ahead and peel the backing off the tape on one side and get this down. Now make sure you're on the inside of your line and matching up your miters, following your line. <clears throat> now the super glue, what I had done before is just, once I got these lined up, it's just kind of separate this and take a little bit of super glue and brush it on the ends here 
and that just kind of holds the miter together. Makes it nice and pretty. All right, so let's line up this end. Okay. Okay, so from here we're going I'm just going to go ahead and put my super glue in each of my miters, let it dry, and then we'll take it over to the machine and we're going to go ahead and stitch these pieces on. So I'm going to start in the same hole that I left off in when I did my top stitching across the top. I'm going to come down. I'm going to make a turn, go across, come up. Then I'm going to actually stitch across right here. Come down the inside, come up and stitch across. Then we're going to come back and we're going to put some stitching right here on either side of this seam, of our miter seam. All right, so. Sorry. All right, let's see. Make sure I start in the exact same hole. And then here we go. Now I'm going to tell you one thing this machine has, you can see this little thing that comes down, this is an edge guide. And this works really well if you want to stitch a quarter of an inch or more. It's really hard with an eighth of an inch because it won't go in, it hits the presser foot at a quarter of an inch. From the needle to the edge of my presser foot is a quarter of an inch. So that's all this edge guide. That's as narrow as it will go. Okay, But you can always twist it to make it larger. So that's a nice feature on this machine.
We're going to come across our line here. So this is a little bit, um, you got to keep rolling your other side to get it underneath here, but it is doable for sure. Now, another feature that this machine has is I have a laser here. So I'm going to see when I turn it on, you see that red light come on? So I can actually use that as I'm approaching this other seam up here to make sure that I line up with it exactly perfect. thread through here. Okay, so straight across. All right. I'm going to pull this thread through. I'm going to tie it off. And I want to go ahead and stitch starting in the hole, you know, the closest hole I can here, all the way down to the closest hole there, just on each side here. And again, tying off my threads. So let me go ahead and do that before I move on. So the laser will definitely come in handy here because what I'm doing is lining that laser up with the seam. Let's see if I can bring you in a little more so you can see that. Okay, so if I, if I try to sew it like this, I can see that here's my seam right here. And I can see it's going to be off from that. So I'm able to angle this in such a way that I can see that the where I'm going to stitch is lined up exactly with the seam.
Now I will say that the um, to raise and lower the pressure foot with this machine, you have a pedal instead of a knee, um, a knee thing. So when I press on the pedal, a lot of times my chair rolls away. I need to get a chair that doesn't roll to sit at this machine. <laughs> I think that would make my life a lot easier. And it does take a little bit to get used to because I've always had the knee, I, even my domestic machine has a knee pet or knee lever, I guess you would call it. And um, so it took a little bit to get used to this foot lever. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this angle. pull this through and then I'm going to show you what this looks like. Can you see that? Actually, it's going to go this way, but... See how nice that laser helped me line that up? So when I bought this machine, they had this package that came, like I said, with the table, the, the flatbed table, the laser, the edge guide. I think that was it. Um, and it, I have to say, I think it was worth every penny. Or you could get just the basic machine with none of those things. They had a speed reducer, which I did not get. Um, and I don't, with the servo motors, I don't really think you need that. I've been able to control it just fine with my foot. So I, I don't have one for either machine, the speed reducer. So I'm going to pull all my threads through and I'm going to tie them off. I'm going to tie them off here at the top. I'll put you out a little further now. And then I'm going to add a rivet. I'm going to go ahead and add a rivet on each side just to kind of dress it up a little bit. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to put our grommets in because we need to get that in before we start sewing the bag together. Okay? So go ahead and finish up your top stitching. Do your mitered corners. Get everything good to go. And then we will move on. All right. So everything is top stitched. Sewn. Good to go. Each panel. <clears throat> now... Figure out which side you want to be your right side. I went ahead and put my tag on here already. And you want to measure a half inch down from this top band. So we're going to go a half inch down and we're going to go two inches from each strap. And we're going to put a mark. And that's where we're going to install our grommets. Okay, so right here and on this side same thing right there and then I just want to make sure that they're even
Looks like we're good. So go ahead and install your grommets per your instructions, whatever kind of grommets you're using, or eyelets, you can use an eyelet. Um, but whatever you want to use to pull your cord through here, that's what we're going to install. So I've done a lot of videos with me installing grommets, so I'm not going to show you how to do that today. But hope, go ahead and get those installed, and then we'll go ahead and move on from there. Okay, so from here you want to take your piece of Decoville Heavy, and what we're going to do is we're going to fuse this with the iron, right, or you could glue it. Um, you want to fuse it right in between these two pieces of Decoville Light and a half inch from each edge. Okay, so I'm going to go do that and then also if you want to put feet on here you can go ahead and square um, probably do about a half inch from the edge an inch from this long edge and go ahead and put feet on it I don't think I'm going to do that I think I'm going to leave the feet off of this one so go ahead and fuse this on and then we'll sew up the sides so, with the Decoville Heavy on, we're now going to sew our sides. So make sure that you line up your sides here first. That's the most important part. And then go ahead and clip the rest of it. Now we're going to sew this at a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so we do the same thing for this side. So now we're just going to go ahead and box our corners. So I'm going to open up my side seam here. Sure, my bottom seams match. And then just go ahead and box this corner. Now I'm going to do one more stitching there, one more seam, about an eighth of an inch away from that. And I'm sorry y'all, I know you didn't see that very well, but I think you get the idea there. Same thing on the other side. Open up our seam, box our corner. So 
So I'm going to trim these corners back just a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and put some double-sided tape on this side here just to kind of hold that down. Right here where I have a lot of bulk because I've got several layers, I'm just going to go ahead and take this apart like this and just cut this bulk down, okay? That'll kind of help with um, things laying a little flatter. So I'm just going to cut those down. So I'm going to do that for both sides and then we will go ahead and turn our bag. Now before you turn yours, make sure that you've got double-sided tape at the top. Remember I went ahead and put mine at the top in the beginning. So make sure you have some double-sided tape there because we are going to end up folding this over. Got my seams cut down. Everything's laying nice and flat. So let's go ahead and turn the bag. Okay, so right now, there we go. Um, you know, we haven't turned this under yet, obviously. And once we do, once we turn our right side in, we put our lining in, we turn this in, it's going to work out perfectly here. Okay? So, if you haven't done so, so already, go ahead and do your lining. Um, Again, however you want. The only thing I do want to tell you is make sure, and I'm sure you all know this, but I'm just going to tell you anyway. Um, you know, you have your lining piece. Make sure you go ahead and sew that onto your main lining, your upper lining to your bottom lining. And then go ahead and put in your pockets or whatever you'd like. Um, you're going to sew the bottom just like you did on this main bag. You're going to sew the sides just like you did on the main bag. And you're going to go ahead and box your corners the same way. You do want to take a slightly larger seam allowance because if you remember we cut the pieces the same size. So you're going to want to start at a half inch seam allowance when you start to sew your lining and then just go to about a 5 8 all the way down the side and then take about a 5 8 there at the bottom. Okay. So um, <clears throat> one other thing I want to remind you of is this bag, um, because we are not taking the, the cording all the way through to the other side, again, I think it would be awkward because every time you tried to get your wallet in or out, it seems like it would get stuck on it. So anyway, it does have a snap closure, so a magnetic snap. So if you decide you want to put a magnetic snap, make sure you do that on your lining as well before you finish it up. Okay, so at this point you should have your bag and your lining made. So we're gonna go ahead and fold our top edge down. So I've got my double-sided tape on here and when I peel off the backing, so when you peel off the backing, you're just gonna fold this over. You've got a nice edge here where your the top of your bag is, okay? It, it's right here. So when you fold this over, you're gonna be able to feel that edge and it's gonna give you a nice crisp edge on this. So I'm going to just use that as my guide and this happens to be right at your one inch mark, okay? That you made when we originally put this on. So I'm just going to fold this over, make sure my seam allowance is open here on the side.
what we have. I also put some double-sided tape on my lining. Before I take the tape off, the backing of the tape off, I'm going to make sure that it fits good in the bag and then figure out exactly where I need to fold it. It should be about um, roughly about, I guess that's about half inch, but let's, let's double check. Now, before we do that, you should have made your cord. Now, what I did with this is I just took my one inch piece, folded it, put some double sided tape, folded it in half, sewed down at a quarter of an inch, and then I took my rotary cutter and cut off the excess. And then from there, I just edge coated the side. And that gave me a nice flat place to edge coat. So we're going to put this in from the back here. And all I'm going to do is just kind of make sure that they're at about the same length for right now. And I'll worry about the rest later. So now on your lining, make sure that you put your, if you decided to do a magnetic snap, that you went ahead and put your magnetic snap in there too. So I'm going to stick this in. And I'm going to fit it in there real good and make sure that it's in the edges real well. It is nice and flat, which it does. So now I'm going to be able to see exactly how far I need to fold this over to match up my sides here. Okay, so I'm going to peel the backing off this tape. And I'm just going to fold this over and match this side up. So let's start with our edges here first. And get some clips. Do this other side. Now these edges here are a little bulky, so I'm actually going to take some, um, you can either hammer them down or take some pliers and kind of squeeze them before you sew it to help, help with the bulk.
so you can see how nice that lining lays. So to sew this on, we're going to go ahead and convert this now to our cylinder arm so we can just top stitch it. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to move you over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing, is I'm just going to remove this table. To do that, I'm just going to lift up. Had some clips on there. Put this aside. And I am going to take this one screw out because it will be in my way. So I'm just going to just do the reverse of what we had before. And then just like that, I have my cylinder arm machine. So this is really a great option if you're looking at buying a machine. You get two in one and yeah, it's probably, I mean, it's just the best of both worlds. So I would definitely, if you're in the market for a machine, take a look at the Texos. It came quick. It comes out of Canada. And Texo has a YouTube channel. I would suggest going on the channel and watching the videos for the machine you're interested in buying before you buy it. That's what I did, and I was able to see exactly how it was going to operate. They have a great um, video on how to set it up once you get it, how to take it out of the box, how to t put it on the table. I mean, I had no problem setting it up at all. It was just simple as pie. I mean, seriously, it was really great. So... Um, that's one of the reasons why I bought the machine is because it was so, as far as the setup, seemed to be so user friendly. I'm just going to start here on the side. And I'm just going to sew around. I do find it's easier for me, I'm sure everybody has their own way of doing it, to keep one hand in front and one hand in the back when I do this. It just holds the bag a little steadier. So I'm going to try not to get my hand in the way here, and hopefully you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. But I do want to hold it back here. so you can see here.
And just like that, it is top stitched. I mean, it just comes out so nice. It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna tie my threads off and I'm going to um, hide them and all that kind of stuff. But the last thing you need to do is to make your little keeper here. So this keeper is um, just double-sided tape down the center, you fold the edges in, and you top stitch, just like you would do a strap or strap connector. Then what I did was I folded it in thirds. So see here, you've got three pieces. Just fold it in thirds, and I put a rivet. Now, you don't have to put a rivet, you can actually sew up and down right here to hold that in. But what it does is it creates a channel for you to feed each of these through. So you just kind of push this through. There we go. Now, in you probably can't tell in the picture, but in the picture they just took their ends and they folded them up like this and they stitched. So that's an option. I think I'm gonna knot mine. You could do a bead, that would be neat. You could fit a bead through there. But I do think you need to do a little something to give it some weight, just to kind of hold it down some. Okay, so there we go. So let me back up and let's take a look at it. So I think it's a great size, certainly a great look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you are inspired by this. Please, you know, post pictures. I love to see what y'all do. You inspire me. Um, really, y'all do. You really inspire me, probably more than you realize. So um, let me see what you do with that. I'm really excited to find out. And I hope it helped. And until next time, happy sewing. <laughs>